All right, so we're doing these shape tools. Notice I have not mentioned using a tablet at all for this because we're not painting, drawing. Um, the mouse is actually kind of a really good tool for arranging shapes and placing things exactly. And the program Illustrator was initially designed for a mouse and still very often the mouse is gonna be a, a good tool for manipulating vector shapes. But let's see where we are and what we can still do. So these are the shapes I have. They're making a pretty good silhouette of this Hulk character. But I'm missing some major identifiers like his hair. And I overshot this shape. So I need to trim that down. Use the Move tool, click on it, transform it. See if I'm going to be able to, to, to um, force that in. Notice what I'm not going to do is put a white shape on top of it, right? And so I need to refine the shapes underneath. So you should be able to limit that a little bit so that it makes sense. I'm not going for exact. Because the more exact you want to get, the more and more complex layered shapes you would need to create. And that's not always the best use of your time. I'm just interested in you understanding the composition better of this artwork that you chose. You can do wonders with the warp tool and some patience. That's better. Last one. Just tuck that in a little bit. Now, so far, everything is still a shape tool, a shape layer. They all have those little icons in them, which is a victory. I haven't had to rasterize any of them. I don't want to rasterize any of them. That means they'll match any resolution I give them. You don't have to get it right with your first warping because every time you hit return, it becomes just another grid of, or another vector shape that you can warp all over again with a new wireframe. So sometimes it takes multiple times on the same, same shape to warp it to really have the control you want over it. And we get better and better at this with practice. I want to fill in little overlap gaps. I think I guess I do want that. And then every once in a while, I just need to fill in an area. My warp tool couldn't quite give me that definition I wanted. So I'm going to use a triangle here and just give it that slight curve. Fill in those gaps. As long as it's all the same color, it will look like the same tool. And then I might duplicate that, use it again over here. Fill in this brow shape. His hairline. So digital artists who use vectors a lot, chief among them type, type designers and logo designers, they'll have certain shapes that they're fond of that they'll use over and over again. Okay, now I'm going to have some fun with the hair. I'm going to go on top of everything. I'm just going to use triangles. 
I'm going to change their color so they're quite a bit darker. Then transform. Notice I have my top layer on as a guide so I can actually see where these edges are. Bring the points to where I want. The big shapes first, and then I warp from there. Now because this isn't the silhouette, these are internal edges, this is where I can use layered shapes. So there's my hair shape. Now if I duplicate that, transform it, and then make it the negative space, the triangle that kind of cuts between the hair, one thing I do not want you to try to do is imitate these outlines at all. all right. These are cutouts of shapes, they're not outlines. And now all I need to make that work is to have that color match this background color. And you see it cuts out that hair shape for me. Then I can keep duplicating this hair shape I have behind, transform it, transform it, rotate it, put it in, and warp the side that gives me his hairline. Maybe do that one more time. Duplicate it, transform it. And then warp it to work with the hairline. Then I can kind of tuck it back on itself using the warp tool. This is tricky, it's like folding the dough. Hit return. Get this bottom part of it. Let's see. Now, if I'm going to want it like that, and then I'm just going to cut this shape out with. Let's do something really sharp. Something just like that. And now I just want to fill that shape. To find it first. <laughs> Should be the layer that's selected. There it is. I want to fill that with the face color. And then I need to bring it up and over those hair shapes. Ah, want to push, push the foot below, there we go, and then what am I missing? I'm getting close. So all I'm missing are these little trails, these kind of curved triangles, so I gotta put those in. So much to do. Then I put a white block in behind everything. And I've done my best to match the composition. <coughs> and that's what these exercises are for, for you to get used to the tools or be exposed to them and to try your best. That is all. It helps make it less intimidating when I require you to be creative with them in our assignments. Okay, so now, let's see. Oh. 
now I need to make a shape that I can make lots of copies of. I'm just fine tuning some of these. And I think it's going to be a triangle. Steal the color, transform it, then I warp. So I've curved kind of a tooth like triangle. This shape will help me get a lot of these tears pretty quickly. All right, transform, rotate. Scale, warp it a little bit more. So first use it big, then duplicate it, transform it, use it small. Just like we did for the hair. Sometimes designers will call these recurring shapes that they use their visual vocabulary. That's a nice way of thinking of it. If you're creating your own grammar of shapes. Duplicate it, transform. <coughs> transform, zoom in so I can grab it. Rotate it. One more time, duplicate, transform. Just use this to fill in the gaps. And then as I'm zoomed in, I see these little issues. I turn off the top, I use my move tool to select them so I can stretch them out. Okay, now duplicate, transform. Now I get to do these. These little wispy, fun, fun shapes, which are so easy to do with the marker. <laughs> but as a vector, they're a real pain. But again, I'm just going to modify shapes that I've already made. I don't need to match the source directly. I'm just trying to get the essence of it. And then duplicate it, and then transform it. Try to get a sense of this fabric torn from the Holtz beleaguered purple sweatpants. Duplicate, transform. See that same shape again. So, okay, and I'm close to being able to submit this now. <clears throat> 